Last month at the Unity World Conference uh, Convention, which was held in Detroit, uh, they had a, a vote that was unanimously uh, speaking in favor of the formation of a new international region. That region is called the Unity Pacific Rim region. It includes Hawaii, it includes New Zealand, it includes Australia, it includes Chile, it includes the Philippines, and all the countries in the Pacific Rim a area. We call it the UPRR, Unity Pacific Rim Region. Today, we are very excited to be able to share with you some people from our region. This is brand new. It's the first time a new region's been created in Unity in, in many, many years. We're very excited about that. Today, I am going to be able to introduce to you some really amazing <coughs> friends. These are people that we have met over the years. It's not your normal kind of church service. I'm not going to stand up here and talk. I'm going to be introducing some amazing people to you. And we're going to begin with these. These are the three, Reverend Rhonda Gola, Reverend Rhonda Murray, and Reverend Phyllis Case. Reverend Rhonda Gola is from Auckland, New Zealand. And would you please give her a wonderful welcome this morning. <laughs> Aloha, my dear. We have been down about three years ago, about 14 of us went to Auckland to help them celebrate their 40th anniversary as a church. It was an amazing experience. This is some of the, oop, some of the people, we need to bring the screen down just a tad, there we go. This is a, some of the people when they're, they're doing their wonderful kind of a Christmas service. There's Rhonda, look how she's all aglow, this is lovely. And this again is some of the beautiful people that are there in Auckland. New Zealand has about 4.4 .4 million people in it in, in the two major islands and many other islands. So we're so happy you're here with us. I want to introduce to you next Reverend Rhonda Murray from Brisbane, Australia. <laughs> this is so wonderful. I've had the great pleasure of being in her church, which is the Reflections of Truth, Unity Reflections of Truth. There they are at their Christmas service. Uh, you can see all the candles are lit. There's some of the beautiful people there in Brisbane. And the last person I want to introduce to you is Reverend Phyllis Grace, who's the director of the National Schools in Australia. Australasia. <laughs> They're all so lovely. I feel like we should be having tea. Because <laughs> So nice. You're going to love hearing them talk. It's just absolutely spectacular. <laughs> it's so busy. And so excited to have you here because normally I'm down there seeing that. And uh, I want to let people know a little bit about who you are and what you do. So uh, this is Reverend Rhonda Gola. Why don't you tell them a little bit about um, your role in unity in New Zealand? Thank you, Sky. And again, I extend a, a, such a warm, warm greeting to you all from Unity in New Zealand, particularly in the Auckland Unity Centre, where we know Sky so well and have met others from your community. So um, I am the Minister and of Unity, um, and I'm also Director of Silent Unity in New Zealand, we also print the Daily Word locally and distribute that throughout New Zealand, so our mailing list embraces both islands. And also we've been blessed for a long time now to have a Silent Unity prayer ministry, although prayer is part of every ministry I know, but to have a Silent Unity as an affiliate is a great honor to have and we fulfill that. So I come here as an ambassador for New Zealand and to pave the way for greater and more far-reaching um, connection through the Spirit of God within us all. So thank you, Scott. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> it's delicious. This is Reverend Rhonda Murray, and she's from Brisbane, Australia. For a while, she was also in the Melbourne Church, where Mindy and I have been many times. Tell us about what your work is in Brisbane. Yes, I'm from the big island that's west of New Zealand, <laughs> called Australia. <laughs> and I'm on the east coast in, in Brisbane, Queensland, which is semi-tropical, so a little like here. And my church is Unity Reflections of Truth, a wonderful group of people who I really believe in walking the talk and you know living the truth and sharing it with others and we just have wonderfully happy Sundays there and although they've already had their Sunday but I know that when they did they were connecting with yeah. us here uh, in Honolulu and sending love and light and um, and just celebrating the connection between 
the unity in Australia and unity here in Hawaii. Beautiful. Uh, Australia has 22 and a half million people in it uh, compared to New Zealand's 4.4. And Australia, if you're not familiar with it, land-wise uh, is, is almost the same exact size as the continental United States. If you were to take the country of Australia map and flip it upside down, do I get this right? And you lay it on the United States, it would almost fit perfectly. It's a, it's a huge country and uh, we're so glad that you made this trip. This is Reverend Phyllis Grace. She's the director of the school. Tell us a little bit about you and what you're doing there. Thank you, Sky, and, and, and it's lovely to be here with all of you. Uh, my role as director of Unity National Schools uh, is a voluntary position, and my role is to keep the records of our students and to encourage our teachers and uh, ministers to teach C as often they, as they can. <laughs> and uh, um, we, we have very few students at the moment, but I know I'm going to go home from yes. here enthused to encourage a whole lot more to join in the C program and work towards their perhaps licensed teaching, which okay. is what I started out with. Um, and and make that connection with you people yeah, here, yeah, of yeah. course, um, which I know has been of great help to us. The um, yeah. teaching that you and Mindy have done in Australia has been of great benefit. And I know our yeah. students have really loved it. Um, so we are grateful for that. I do like to teach as often as I can as well. So, uh, yes. Um, yeah. And I work out of Adelaide, which is... Uh, in the middle of the country, on the southern coast. So, wow. uh, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty scattered um, yes, in are. Australia. Yes. You are. All three of these beautiful people are here this week. We're having a special seminar. Each uh, international region is eligible to form a school, kind of like a seminary, that can teach the licensed Unity teachers and can also teach and prepare uh, Unity ministers so they don't have to go to the seminary in Kansas City because that's very difficult from other countries. So each country can do it. And we're all here this week to be learning how to set that up here in Hawaii and then also to re-energize and to get up to on the new standards for the one in what we call Australasia, which is Australia and New Zealand together. Yeah. The reason I wanted to invite them up here today is because one of the great principles of unity is that we walk our talk. It's, it's about action, and, and, and it's lovely to think about all the things that we talk about with God, but it's really important to see how that works in our life. And ministers sometimes are a little reluctant to share those because we're supposed to be perfect, I know. Uh, but you know what? We're still here, so we still have to face a lot of things that people do. And what I thought might be wonderful, and they have been so um, gracious to, to be vulnerable enough to share with everyone, examples of how the principles that we are teaching here in this community have worked in your life during difficult times to show that it really does work. This is not something we just go to school and talk about, but these are actual things that work. I want to start with you, Rhonda, to share something. Well, thank you again, Sky. Um, we've shared twice already this morning, so it's wonderful. Um, I was just thinking about it and when we had a break between each um, service and one of the things that I do feel really deeply about, uh, this may not be particularly a personal experience, but just the wonderful words of Eric Butterworth, I am the Christopher Columbus of my soul. And for me, the prayer is that way that leads me into meditation and into the silence where it simply is, where I've gone beyond that which I am in the outer world and gone into that realm of being. And what I've found is that it holds me in good stead. I often say in situations that I'm faced with in my family life and in ministry, when I get that in the uh, area of the divine order area and this back at the, soul, the navel here is uh, that little unrest feeling. And I just think not only divine order, but what is this to me? And I stop immediately, and that connects me into that presence and power and allows me to have that gap. God appears peacefully for me to be able to reflect and know that when I answer the call from the human being response, that immediately I change that in just a moment, and we change our thought. That's the third principle, which I have found, those five principles when I came into unity. 
and the 12 spiritual faculties have been the blueprint from which I have and continue to feed myself that I truly do continue to walk my talk because ultimately, as we said earlier, that's the truth that we need and that's within each of us and, you know, the Christ in me greets the Christ in you. So thank you again thank for sharing. You. Thank you for that, yeah. Rhonda. Well, I would agree with Rhonda that, you know, unity is more than something we do on Sundays. For all of us, whether we're ministers, licensed teachers, or members of unity, it's really a spiritual journey. And each of us work, walks that journey step by step. And the unity principles work to help us whatever the situation. And in the over three decades that I've been in unity, my life has taken some very radical changes from originally having three teenagers and a husband and a music shop through to being on my own, um, working as a licensed unity teacher in the unity office, going to uh, Kansas City to Unity Village for two years to train as a minister, which is where I first met yes. Sky. We overlapped in ministerial yes. school. And going back to the ministry in Brisbane, and then I took a little break from ministry, and I said, okay, Spirit, I think I'd like to have a secular ministry for a while. And so moved out of full-time ministry for a while, and then was sent. And I really can say there's no other word but sent by Spirit to Unity of Melbourne. You see, Melbourne's the cold, wet part of Australia, and I really didn't want to go there. <laughs> but if there's one thing that I've learned, there's no surer way of setting ourselves up for useless, unnecessary suffering than to refuse to follow our guidance. <laughs> so I spent four years in Melbourne, and then I returned to Brisbane to my present ministry with Reflections of Truth, which are just such a tremendous blessing. But you know, in all those ins and outs of life, we don't do the journey alone. There's always the people around us, be it friends, colleagues. Your own children are one thing. The people that they marry can be quite another matter. Anybody got any daughters-in-law here? <laughs> and, and the thing is, we can't work on them. No matter how much we might want them to change, there's only one person we can work on, and that's ourselves. And that's been a real learning experience for me. I mean, some of my children are actually on the second time around and they've accumulated quite a few grandchildren for me along the way. And so I have had to learn if there's a, a problem between the, the mothers of my grandchildren and myself, I can't do it. I can't do anything about what they're experiencing. I can't take responsibility for their challenges. But I can look within myself and say, what is it in me that's drawing this, this difficulty, this challenge? And by working on my own inner child, my own inner, inner stuff, if you like, it's amazing how it actually makes a difference to the other person. Have you noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> and so all of us have those sorts of ongoing human challenges with family, with friends, with colleagues at work, whatever it is, we need to remember that we can only work on our own stuff. And by letting go of you know, anything that's less than truth, anything that's less than love about ourselves, then we open the way for us to be an expression of truth and love that actually touches other people at a very deep level that they may not even be aware of and makes a huge difference in the world. So I would say to all of you, every one of us, can, be a, can make that difference in the world that we sang about at the beginning of this service. And it doesn't matter where in the world we live, mm -hmm. we're all one, we're all in oneness, with one spirit. Yeah, beautiful, thank you. I'm going to share with you an experience that I had when I first saw live the Unity Tower from Unity Village. And it was like, wow, I've actually made it. And in that moment, I realised that my journey had started right back when I had left Adelaide some nine years earlier. No, no, it wasn't nine years, it was six. Six years earlier, when I followed 
an inner feeling that had told me to go to Perth to live. Now, I was not connected with any church, didn't even know about unity, but after 18 months of procrastination, my second name, yes. um, I went. And I thought, what's the worst that can happen? I either love it and stay, or I dislike it immensely, and I pack up and go back to Adelaide. Well, I got off the train after two, and, two nights and felt I have come home. And I thought, oh, that's crazy. But what I realised when I saw that tower was that I had actually come home because it was in Perth that I found unity. And the first day I went to unity, I said to the minister, Alan Lee, how can I teach this stuff? This is stuff I have known deep within me all my life and never heard. Why is that? I want to share it. And that day I started my journey as a license, uh, in training to be a licensed teacher, doing lots yeah. of study, traveling a lot because Perth at that time was doing no teaching as such for CEP as it was then. I had to travel to Brisbane, which is on the opposite side of the world, <laughs> almost. And it is north, whereas Perth is south. And I had limited funds, but I decided this was what I was going to do. I took up a job I didn't like, but it, it helped me along the way. And during my training as uh, towards licensed teaching, I got the call to do ministry. I thought, that's impossible. Because at that time, we had to go to the village for two mm. years. I had to prove that I could keep myself in America for two years on my own funds. I didn't have that kind of money. But I'd continued following the dream. I kept a vision, an image book. I'd done a lot of Stretton Smith's Smith, yes. 4G program. Done it twice. Did the image book and all the other affirmations and stuff. And uh, lots of prayer. And as many classes as I could fit in in the time I had in Brisbane. And thought, well, where am I going to get the money? Don't have it. Looked at all sorts of avenues, no way. And a, I had a knock on my front door one evening and the gentleman who owned the rental uh, uh, place next door was standing there. I'd never met him. And he introduced himself and I said, I, I have a proposal for you. I'd like to buy a portion of your land so that I can subdivide my land. And it was that sale of a small section of land that financed me to Unity Village. I had no idea how that was going to out mm. picture. I didn't need to know. I just needed to put feet on my prayers, do what was mine to do, and have faith that it would work and that God would be there all the time. And that was um, just an, an emotional moment when I saw that tower yeah. and realised that, yes, God had been there all through my life, even though I hadn't been aware of it, and really had seen me through all those difficult challenges. All I had to do was get out of the way and let it flow. And here I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you all for sharing these stories. And I realize it's a little bit of a stretch because sometimes ministers don't like to admit that you know we don't, we don't really have it all together but you know that sharing of the journey is what you said it's real and 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 these these principles are real and the truth is real and you've made it real for us thank you very much for sharing with us today <laughs> What I invite you to take away from all of this today is uh, these are beautiful, shining examples of people who have said yes all the way to God. And, and th that's really, I believe, that all Spirit ever wants from us is to say yes. And that's our big responsibility is when we feel that, as Rhonda said, that, that guidance from here is to say yes. The how is God's business. And you've heard the stories of once we say yes, then the doors are open one way or another. And I hope you feel encouraged today hearing these beautiful stories. What they know, you know too. And you can know how this works in your life by just saying yes. Always saying yes to God. And I love uh, Rhonda's uh, 
very first point. Uh, you should have been here at the other services because every, every time we told a story, it was a different story. So I've heard nine different great stories today, and, and, and they were great. They, they were all good, but I never knew what they were going to say. But Rhonda today talked about the power of the connection, the importance of meditation, the importance of whenever anything happens. She, you called it the gap. What was it you said? God appearing peacefully. I like that. You just make a gap in all the activities of the day and know that that was where God is going to appear peacefully when we stop and take a deep breath. In fact, we're going to create a gap right now in the service. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes with me, take a deep breath, and allow that presence of God within you to appear in your own mind, in your own heart, in your own life right now in this moment. Because really, that connection is all that's, that's important. It's all that's transformative. It's the only thing that's going to really make a difference in your life. And it can. Starting today. Starting now. As we come to God in the sacred and holy silence. 